We are smack dab in the middle of fall. We just passed Halloween and it is time to do an entire Florida fall garden tour. That's right, I'm gonna take you from the front to the back to the sides. We're gonna look at native plants, vegetables, tropical plants, so that you can get inspired for things that you may wanna to add to your Florida fall garden. So let's get started. started on our fall vegetable garden. I think one of the challenges as we go through fall is that a lot of things are not looking at their prime. We have things that are fading and we have things that are coming into bloom. But there are still a lot of fabulous things that you could be adding to your garden or could have added to your garden to bring a lot of beauty here. You guys see I've got a couple pots of things going, especially carrots and aloe, um, that are going to be transplanted at some point. The aloe that is. Seminole pumpkins running here, plus we got our dune sunflower. And what's looking gorgeous with all its calyxes all over it is our Jamaican sorrel, roselle, getting ready for a complete harvest. Actually so much so <laughs> that the plant broke in half. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out. We've got corn going and even a little sunflower, very cute. But over here in our tropical area, couple things that are happening. One, it seems like when we got past Hurricane Ian, the cold snap, our tropicals kind of bounce back a lot better than they have in the fall. So we've got invasive Mex Mexican petunia. We've got, of course, our Cleodendrum glory bowers and our Cassia fistula going up, 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 and hoping that's gonna flower. Gorgeous yellow flowers this coming spring. And then I'll show you some more back in the backyard, but the cordylines or cadillions are all in bloom right now. And the bees seem to be really loving that. Um, I won't go too much into the vegetable garden. I just did a vegetable garden tour update in the what to plant in November, but a couple of things have changed even since then. Our eggplants are just starting to come in bloom. So I'm looking forward to some eggplants and I'm starting to get some of my first green peppers or red peppers or yellow peppers. Peppers are gonna be had. I will tell you the monarch butterflies and our cloudless sulfurs going crazy. They're super excited about some of the stuff over here. Um, you can see the area is covered still with our sunshine mimosa, which is still going into blossom. These are these adorable powder puffs. We're getting some of those still, even though we're pretty late in the season and the heat's starting to die down. And from a vegetable perspective, our bean plants, our Puerto Rican black beans, plus our loof are kind of fading out their hot weather crops so it's really time for our warm and now cold weather crops we got tomatoes starting to go crazy over here and yes halloween just finished up so we've got peppers going eggplants going loofah finishing over here 
And of course we've got some orchids hiding. I really like doing this where you put the orchids in a basket and then hang them in these trellises and it gives them the shade that they need. But then you also get these gorgeous blossoms that look like this. Oh, these ones are so pretty. So I'm a very big fan of orchids, adding them around the garden. Now, if we head over to this area, we've got a lot of native plants in bloom from our fire bush down to sweet goldenrod. This is actually an edible plant and you can use it for teas or actually using it like an herb. But right now the bees are all over it in a really good way. They are not bothering any of us, but they are having a blast getting tons of pollen, tons of nectar. These plants have been growing since earlier this year. I think I planted them in January, February, and they finally flowered in the last couple weeks. And they are just so beautiful. And the cool thing is, is that if I let them go to seed, they will come in and just add to this area. And with the mix of those, plus some of the ones that bloomed in the spring, I can just basically fill in this area with wildflowers over and over again. You can also see this white plant right here. This is our spot is bees balm beautiful. I thought this was done for the year. Like you can see, here's the seed pot, but it has come back again and again. Another one that you can use as a tea herb, I think it's like a oregano substitute in here. Um, that a horse mint or a mint substitute. It's really, really pretty smell. Again, bees love it. I usually have been seeing a lot more bumblebees and I do see monarchs coming to these ones. So if you're looking to get butterflies, consider adding this one. Um, the beach verbena, this has been actually doing pretty well up until about the last week and now it seems to be fading out. This has gone most of spring and summer, but now it's coming to an end. And this, it looks like I got some creeping sage in my garden. <laughs> I don't remember planting this, but it looks like I got some. And it's just kind of twining through and the bee, little bees have been liking that. So you can see a little bit of a, electric blue flowers coming up and through the garden. Nice mix in with this frog fruit, which for those who've been watching the whole frog fruit journey, I have been walking this path and walking this path and walking this path. And you can see it has been doing really well and it can't even root here. There's actually stone or uh, pavers right below. So I am strongly recommending. And then, oh, also we have our desert rose, which is putting on a nice, beautiful flush. This gorgeous desert plant. Uh, firebush turning red there and then we've got our peacock flower is putting out a little bit more peacock flowers this is also known as the pride of Barbados I will tell you my big butterflies that like to fly up high really really enjoy this one it's gotten a quite a bit of a lean <laughs> since the hurricane we'll be doing a pretty hard cut back when it gets to winter time but if you're looking for something that has a really pretty tropical flower pride of Barbados aka peacock flower Looking a little less cute in this whole area, uh, we have iron, giant ironweed mixed with porterweed. And you can see our porterweed is getting some bumblebee action right now. This is the native type versus the um, exotic. I'm not quite sure if it's invasive, but definitely the exotic type, which is more of a small shrub. This one is a ground cover that mixes really well with other wildflowers. <laughs> you do a better job than me pruning it. You can actually get a lot of action here. I actually have what's this is swamp milkweed growing up in it. So it gives a space for my monarchs to come in and come down and take hide out. And I can also put some other wildflowers in here that are more spring summer ones. These are Stokes asters that are hiding in there and will be coming back in other seasons. I realized I forgot a couple plants that are flowering over here. This is blanket flower. It was once considered to be native. It is now considered a naturalized species. It is native to the United States. It's just not native to Florida, not this version of it. Um, this is a really pretty one that actually was planted in, I don't know, what's it, January, February this year, and has come back and come back and come back over and over again. And I think it mixes really well with this sweet goldenrod. And it's trying to fill in this area here, um, but I think we get a little bit too much shade. So the frog fruit is helping us out. And if you can see these little purple flowers, purple blue flowers, they're all closed up right now. They were wide open this morning. These are blue curls. It's a small shrubbing plant native to the state of Florida. And actually speaking of natives, we got a few more back here that I can show you that the butterflies have been frequenting from our native wild petunia. Oh, I'm sorry, blocking the light on you there. There you go. It's a really cute, pretty lavender color and it's mixed in with 
And this is also beach mist flower. This is a native species of teas to the keys, which is actually almost extinct out in the ecosystems, but has been picked up by a lot of people to add to our gardens. And in these beds right here, we just have sweet potatoes, a bunch of cold weather crops, cauliflower, or not cauliflower, <laughs> cabbages, beets, carrots, strawberries, got strawberries and lettuces over here, radishes down there, and lots and lots and lots of bananas. So right now I've got one banana rack, two banana racks, three banana racks, and actually up in here, there is a banana rack that is just starting to drop right there. It's flowers just emerging. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. So we have four banana racks and potentially a fifth one over there coming in very shortly. But carrying on more so with our fall garden tour, we're heading over here. And this is a privet senna. This one has been gorgeous. Got it earlier this year and it puts out these type of flowers. Beautiful native plant, can handle a little bit of cold for central South Florida. I think you can get up in, a little bit into the North Florida area. I definitely think it's one of our native plants that has a very tropical look. It's a host plant to many of our native yellow butterflies. I definitely think you should consider adding this one if you want to pull on more yellow butterflies. Like think Encanto, you're just gonna have lots of them flying around. Let's go up front here and we're gonna check out some of our native wildflowers. There's a few that have been blooming that weren't blooming in my last video. So our cardinal flowers are done. Rouge plant is putting on berries. I've actually seen a lot of songbirds hanging out next to our rouge plant, eating those little, little red berries. You can see them right there. They've been picking them off left and right, you can see. <laughs> I've been seeing little sparrows mostly. And then of course we've got our woodland blue sage. These are all native plants that I'm going to be showing you in the next couple of minutes. Over here we got our Florida paintbrush. Railroad vine is coming in really nicely. But what I think is looking really cute right now is this is our yellow silk grass. I think this is looking really good. It got quite the tilt in Ian, but when we come back to next year, I think we're gonna get a little bit more hanging over here. But what's gorgeous right now is we got our first purple cone flower. I am so excited about this. And I think we'll be getting a second one right over here. It's hiding in the railroad vine. Beyond that is our Coreopsis Leavenworthy native flower. Um, could be one of our native, I'm sorry, state wildflower. Our rattlesnake master kind of spent for the season. Looks like we're kind of fading out for the end of the year. But our pineland heliotropes with their white flowers have been going strong. The flowering has slowed it down. But over here, the liatrices. This is the purple that you're seeing right here. We've got them all throughout. Plus our mooly grass, which is also turning purple. This is their first year here. I expect this to be even more gorgeous the coming year. Oh, more bees. Bees are have, hanging out over here, Everglades square stem, also known as salt and pepper plant. And then we have a few other native wildflowers that are starting to fade. Hi! That is a golf fritillary. Um, our starry rose and weeds, joe pie weed, a few of those different wildflowers have all started to head out for the season. And are going to seed so hopefully we'll get to see them next year because they have some pretty long bloom seasons. Also recovering from Hurricane Ian, papayas. Our papayas are actually doing really really well. These were just planted I think June of this year and look at how tall they've gotten. They're huge. Oh hi monarch. If you want butterflies, plant native. They for sure will hang out in your garden all day. So let's head over here to one of our other native projects. So over here, we used to have an arch got knocked down by Hurricane Ian, but we've taken advantage and we added, we have sea soy goldenrod coming up through the trellis that we moved, which was actually really helpful because these tended to fall down in front of the garage. But these are great for all of our pollinators, similar to seaside goldenrod, so these ones will tend to get a lot taller. We cut them short when we were trying to deal with the uh, damage that we got from Hurricane Ian. But you can also see down here, this is spiderwort. It will actually bloom in the spring. But another bloomer for the fall is narrow leaf yellow top and this one has bounced back really nicely uh it mostly looked like this kind of dead portion right here 
um, but we gave it a really hard prune and it is starting to come back in full force. And so what we'll expect to see over the coming month is this turning a gorgeous yellow. And you can see our beauty berries. The beauty berries are getting kind of spent, but the birds are still eating them. These are really important plants to the migration of a lot of our songbirds for the fall time period. It's a great one to have. And hiding amongst it is another native plant. This is Blue Ocean Morning Glory. It's a little bit spent because we're past the morning, but it's still looking really pretty. That's my neighbor's yard. He also likes to plant lots and lots of things. <laughs> So we'll head into the backyard and see what's growing there. Over here we can see the cordillions with bees. They're flowering. This is a great time of year for them to flower and help our pollinators out. So if you don't have native plants, this is one of the ones that they'll actually use. The challenge is these don't bloom for an extended period of time. So they're limited in what they can do. But if you have them in your garden, make sure you leave this portion so that the bees can get some food. Over here, we've got crotons, and I have seen a couple crotons starting to bloom. But what's always in bloom for most of the year here, except for the coldest of winter, is our hibiscus. We've got seminal hibiscuses and a couple other different types in here, and they are looking gorgeous. We have bananas that are constantly going over here. And, oh, space where I lost my tree. Got lots of different types of crotons. I really do like these painted crotons. They're very pretty. A lot of texture and color. Not native to Florida, but still very pretty. Native to Florida back here though is a shining coffee plant. This one hasn't fruited for me yet, but the other one on the side of the house has. And then over here, more types of hibiscus. This is this weeping type of hibiscus, super pretty. Look at this flower, oh my gosh. That just feels like the tropics right there. Oh, and I kind of skipped over them, but look at these cordillions, look at them. Oh. So, so, so pretty. And you can prune these pretty hard. This plant uh, preceded us living in the house. It used to look very tall and wimpy and we cut it down pretty hard and it's bounced back fuller than ever and it puts on these beautiful flowers. Look at the bees, they're just so happy. <laughs> and then over here we got our orange tree, which does have oranges on it, very exciting that are starting to change colors. Ours is usually ready around late December, January, or February. Kind of depends on how cold the year gets. I think with the cold snap, it might actually go a little bit earlier than it has gone historically. We of course have way more hibiscuses here. And if you're looking at those stakes saying, what is that? That's a fig tree. We thought it was dead. Someone gave it to us. It looked like a stick, but it's actually bouncing back and big leaves. So try to put a little marker there so we didn't run over it with the lawnmower. And behind that, we've got the sugar cane that we recently added. It's growing nice and tall. Really excited for that one. Lots and lots of hibiscus and more cordillions. Look at these. Oh, they're all in flower and the bees are so happy. Super happy. Behind that, some variegated ginger. This is actually lantana. This was sold as a native lantana. This is not a native lantana. This looks like it is a invasive hybrid Lantana montevidensis, but we got a zebra long wing hanging out on it. So we'll enjoy that. These are Calamondans, which we'll get to a really cute one in a second. These ones are a little tired at the moment. That's our exotic fire bush. More crotons, really pretty. And then mixed in with them, those are tropical sage. They have these really pretty red flowers that butterflies, hummingbirds, they really like them. Uh, here we used to have a jacaranda, which seems to actually be bouncing back from the stump. So we'll see what happens there. But the fire bush that used to be behind it is also trying to make a comeback. And then more cordelians. And there is our calamondan tree that actually has a ton of fruit on it. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna be making a lot of marmalade. What I've actually been doing with this one is juicing them and then I can the juice and we use it as lemon and lime juice alternatives. And then our gardenias, which aren't in bloom at this time of year. And then back here, on this side of the house, we have mulberry trees, bananas, and 
creeping aster. I am so excited. Hopefully this will be in bloom, full bloom very soon. So we just got our very, very first blossoms. But if you actually look, this thing is covered in buds. So I think in the next week, but like this one, this was closed this morning when I looked. So I think in the next few days, maybe the week, this is gonna be covered in flowers. Climbing aster, native plant. This is our white passion vine. The zebra longwings really love this. And there you can see our shiny coffee below and our white aquatic milkweed, which is native to Florida. More bananas. This one got knocked over by Ian, but it's still going, almost ready for harvest. And a papaya hiding underneath that needs to be moved. <laughs> but a lot of really, really pretty plants that are about to explode. Oh, including these mulberry trees. They are full, 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 full of berries that are about to flower. Oh, hi. It's nice to see you too. And if you're feeling really inspired by some plants and you want to see what they look like in other seasons, go ahead and check out my spring garden tour and my summer garden tour. And if you want some help with what to grow and when to grow it, go ahead and check out www.wildfloridian.net slash calendar for a free seasonal gardening guide to help you stay on track with vegetables, tropicals, and native plants too. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye! <laughs>